All right, Mike G. Eight days, just days away. Yeah. I'm asking every guest that comes on the show this week to kind of give me a name on the offensive side and the defensive side of the ball. As far as guys that they're excited to watch and see. So let's start with the offense. Who uh, who are you excited to watch this Saturday at 8 a.m. on offense? Uh, this is not going to be a shock to anybody. Malcolm so, Johnson Jr. Yeah, listen. Now, now the conversations that, hear me out. The conversation we just had about TJ Finley. Yes. And, you know, chemistry with the wide receivers. Malcolm's going to play a big role in that. And we need somebody who can take the top off the defense. You're talking about somebody who runs a 10-second, 100-meter dash. I mean, he's a track star. He's a track star at wide receiver on the outside. Brian he's faster H- than the speed of light, Mike G. I, I, I certainly hope so. Uh, Brian Harson made a comment about um, Zach, about him making a move on a route to get a guy off him and get open and make a play on the ball when he talked about people who have improved. And when Mike I- G saw this tweet about the quote he screenshotted and sent it to me i'm sitting in church and i pull my phone out and mike g's texting me about malcolm johnson jr i'm like bro it's sunday but your love for malcolm johnson jr takes no days off and i appreciate that hey listen um i felt like god wanted me to let you know (laughs) <laughs> that he has a plan for Malcolm Johnson Jr. All right. And that plan is for him to be our deep threat this year. So I'm excited on the offensive side of the ball to just see what kind of chemistry he has with these quarterbacks and, and whether he's going to turn into the guy, the go make a play for us guy that Auburn desperately needs on the outside. What do you like more? Malcolm Johnson Jr. or sliced bread? Um, I'm kind of doing a no carb right thing no right now. So I'm gonna so I'm gonna go Malcolm is, Johnson Jr. <laughs> so you think Malcolm Johnson Jr. is the greatest thing since last bread? That's what exactly. You're yep, that's where I'm going. I'll die with that. that. I'll die on that hill. <laughs> um cool. All right. Who uh what about on defense? Who are you looking for on defense? Okay, all right. So there are a lot of potential picks here. No uh, question. Because there are new names all over the place. Mm-hmm. I am actually gonna go uh with Dylan Brooks. Okay, I want to see what this young man has. Now, he fell into our lap because what of gift. right Happy Meal Gate over at Tennessee last year. Right, and he didn't get any time on the field last year, but he's now been in Auburn strength and conditioning program for a calendar year, and I'm really excited to see what this young man is going to do. So it's one thing to get these transfers that come in, but this, I mean, this is a homegrown guy, right? Who is ESPN had him as like a top 20 uh, recruit in the country. So he was lower on some other boards, but ESPN rated him really high. And I'm super excited to see what this kid can do because we lost to Kobe McLean and having a dynamic and slash linebacker or wherever I'm interested to see where they're going to put him. I think uh, he's pretty much exclusively at edge right now. Edge, yeah, edge rusher or whatever. See, they're that's- so thin. I mean, Eku talked about it, and then Coach Harson talked about like I think they feel really good about the three guys they have: Derek Hall, Eku Liotta, and, and Dylan Brooks. But after that, it, there there appears to be a pretty decent drop off. Yeah, I just I'm excited to see some a, a young guy get out there, a young recruit. It's going to say a lot about how we're developing talent so it's one thing to go out and get these junior college transfers that come in here and they kind of are what they are and but you know they're 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 going to be what they're going to be like equiliota was a solid transfer Mm -hmm. i'm not sure auburn made him any better i just think he was a solid pickup for us but the development pipeline is going to uh you know kids like dylan are going to show us what what our development pipeline looks like for young guys that come in and, and whether we have what it takes to get the most out of these kids. Well, we've seen it transform their bodies. I mean, their, their first year in the program and mm-hmm. Eku came in late, you know? And so, I mean, now he, you know, he's gained 20 pounds. He's an absolute unit out there, but like some of the, some of these younger recruits like Caden Bridges gained 20 pounds. Um, so, you know, and Dylan Brooks, I mean, just physically, I mean, he does not look like a redshirt freshman. I mean, he looks like a grown man, getting ready for a senior season. And I think that matters. I think it's very, very important. But the big question is like, okay, you can you can develop them, you can develop their bodies and make them look like Marines, which is great. That's how I like my edge rushers, looking like jacked 
boys, but the whole like creating a football player, right? That's that's different, right? Well, and, I mean, it certainly seems like he's got the athletic prowess, but can you can you pull it all together and make a really good football player out of him? That's the more important development piece. No is doubt, technique, right? Yeah. Um, you know, you can have all the speed in the world, but if you run yourself out of every play as an edge rusher and you don't know when to keep it in control, when to bounce it inside, like, you know, I mean, it's 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 cool to be fast. Um, but speed is not all that you need. Strength is not all that you need. Um, you know, no. teaching a guy how to harness those things in the right situations to make a play is what's going to be most important. So uh, I'll be watching that for Dylan Brooks, man. I, I think that his development, and how he does this year will say a lot about you know what we're doing on the defensive side of the ball in terms of development. Yeah, what does that first step off the line look like? Mm -hmm. Dylan Brooke with his long arms, can he use those arms to create separation and then take another quick step, to, you know, throw the, the offensive tackle off balance and, and kind of use its abilities there? That'll be that'll be fun to see for sure. And and I think those isolated one on one battles that you see, Dylan Brooks versus Alec Jackson or Brendan Coffey or Killian Zaire, whoever's playing tackle against him at that moment. Um, I think those isolated one-on-one -on -one moments are the things where you can actually pull some meaning out of A-Day. But people aren't paying attention to that. People right. aren't paying attention to where the football is. But right. as far as these guys that are like competing for playing time, especially on the offensive tackle front. Right. Um, and Dylan, Dylan knows he's going to be part of the rotation because he has to be. It's just a numbers thing. But does he play 10% of the snaps or does he play 25% of the snaps? Yeah. And, and that's something that he can, he's actually going to be competing for. Yeah, it sucks because on defense, you, you, I mean, for these rushers, they can't hit the quarterback. So it's hard to know how any play to turn out because they've got to pull up before. No, but uh, for the most part, made. I mean, you're winning, you're winning the battle before you get to the quarterback, though. Fair, fair enough. You know what I mean? Fair enough. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, Sometimes you you don't know what you got until you put these game these guys in a game and live game situations. But you're right; we can take a look at technique and see if he's beating his man off the ball. Yeah. You know, I, I'm I'm not sure. No, no knock to our O line, but um, how he does against our O line and how he's going to do against SEC O lines can be two different things. You know, one of the things that makes some of the better teams good. Is, is that the competition that they go up against in practice is equal to or greater than what they're going to see on Saturdays. So yeah. when you have a good development piece, iron sharpens iron in that respect. Totally. So, you know, when, when you're when you're um, when your scout team guys are still worthy of scholarships, it helps. Um, it helps th these guys sharpen themselves in practice. Uh, you know, Courtney Taylor used to tell us going up against Carlos Rogers was, you know, the best DB in college football that year was uh, uh, something that helped him greatly because he felt like from a uh, competition standpoint, if I can be on Saturday, yeah, if I can beat Carlos, right, if I can I beat can Carlos, yeah. who's going to stop me on Saturday? Right. So I hope that I hope that that's um, I, I'm not sure we're getting that on D line versus O line in this situation, uh, but it doesn't mean these guys aren't going to be good, though. It just means well, I think you may be getting it. I think the offensive line may be benefiting from it. Yeah, for sure. You know, definitely, definitely. Does Auburn have a top five SEC defensive line? Maybe. Maybe. Right. That wouldn't shock me at all. 